it's not working. Oh. I've got 25% remaining on the battery and there is no charges close by. All right, hey everyone, welcome back to another video. So today I am going on a solo road trip. I'm gonna be spending one night away in Dalesford. So let's key it in to the nav and see what this trip's gonna look like. Okay, so we're gonna arrive with 10% battery. It is two hours and 36 minutes. I definitely should have planned and charged the battery greater than 78% would have been helpful on this trip. 211 kilometers and I should arrive just after 1.30. So in hindsight, I probably should have charged the car up a little bit more than this. We are estimated to arrive with only 10% battery, um, only because last night I charged it to 80%. I didn't get it to 90 or 100. So whenever you're planning a road trip, obviously a good tip to just try and charge it to that 100% mark from my understanding, it's not good to do that all the time, but for something like a road trip, it's a good, uh, a good chance to just give that battery a full charge. Okay, so it's got us stopping at the Camberwell Supercharger. If we went remove charging spots. Now turn right onto Hunt Avenue. It is very hot in the car. It's been sitting in the sun. One thing we've noticed now that the weather is getting a bit warmer in Melbourne is the radiant heat you feel from this big glass panel up the top. So right now the car's been sitting in the sun for about 20 minutes. As soon as you get in, like the rest of the cabin cools down really quickly thanks to the aircon and having the windows down, but you've got this really strong sort of radiant heat. You can feel it on the top of your head. That seems to take a while to cool down. Um, so probably in about five to 10 minutes after having the aircon on for a while, that'll start to cool down and obviously driving um, the car will help. But yeah, just an interesting thing to be aware of if you're in a really hot climate. All right, so that was a very fast supercharging session. I didn't even get a chance to do any filming for you guys because I parked it and then I went down to the bathroom, grabbed some lunch, and I got a notification to say that supercharging was almost finished. Unbelievable. So um, I went from <laughs> I went from like 50% to now 85% in what would have been 10 minutes. Amazing. Okay, so it's gonna take an hour and 33 minutes, 123 kilometers, and we will get there with 42%, which is absolutely fine. There is a charger in Dalesford. <laughs> All right, I just checked in at the accommodation for the night. A few things that I noticed on the last three hours, four hours I've spent driving in the car. First of all, this car is such a pleasure to drive. It made this trip so much easier than if I was in our Mazda CX-5. There's lots of reasons as to why. Obviously the standout is autopilot takes the fatigue out of driving and the adaptive cruise control, great. But probably the biggest noticeable difference is just how smooth and responsive the car is and how in control you do feel, which in turn made me feel a lot safer on all the different freeways I've just been on throughout all the traffic, the overtaking, um, and as we're coming into the country, the swervy roads. And that's noticeable when you're going up hills, for example. I would have to get in the right lane every time there was an incline because I would be overtaking everyone. One thing with autopilot is, you know, I don't have the full self-driving, so I'm constantly turning it off and on. Yeah, if you're happy to just kind of stick in the left lane and go a little bit slower, then yeah, you just like sit there, obviously try and keep your hands on the wheel, or you should keep your hands on the wheel. Um, but it gives you an opportunity to just kind of relax a bit more, know that the car's doing a lot of the hard work and you can look around a little bit. Um, so yeah, it's a really nice way to be driving through the countryside. 
I was reminded though that autopilot can't do sharp corners very easily. So that's something to just keep in mind. The road coming into Dalesford's like 100 Ks. I had autopilot on and as we're coming around like a sharp turn, it's like, yeah, this isn't gonna, at 100 kilometers an hour, it's not going to turn around a sharp corner for me. From that point on, I was just driving the car normally believe it or not. The temperature in the car was comfortable. I know in the past I've said it's been a little bit tricky to try and get the temperature right in the car. Um, but on this trip, like it was, it's a sunny, hot day outside today. Aircon was like, you know, five fan speed, 20 degrees, just the whole time. I didn't have to change it. Obviously I had to stop in Camberwell for supercharging, which was unbelievably fast, but you know, Camberwell is not on the freeway, so I did have to turn off, drive for 10 minutes, go to the charger, and then 10 minutes to get back on the freeway. So, you know, that's just an extra thing that you kind of need to plan for, but I needed to go grab some lunch, go to the bathroom. So, like, it was a stop I was going to make. It's just, I look forward to the day when that's literally a join to the freeway, like a normal service station is. There is a charger in town here, a third party charger that I'll plug into either later tonight or in the morning. I'm currently at 50%. So yeah, look, the whole charging thing when you're on a road trip, it does add a tiny extra level of complexity, but it's so worth it to be able to drive a car that's like that. It's 8 p.m. and I've just pulled up at the third party charger in town, the one charger available in town, and it's out of order. It's not working. And I am currently on 38% and there is no chargers close by. So I am going to have to do a bit of planning and try and work out how I get out of this pickle. I do have my charging cord in the back if I can find some sort of PowerPoint, but herein lies the current problem with electric cars at the moment in Victoria. There's still not enough charging stations. So if one of them's broken, like this one, there's not too many nearby. All right, so you can see that I'm in Dalesford. If we tap on the charging options. You can see that the closest charger, or supercharger I should say, is in Ballarat, which is, I mean, not that close. And then if we jump back in, there are a few destination chargers in town here, but I can't use any of them. The lake house has a charger. I'm not staying there. It's only for uh, people that are staying there and same with this place customers only please call ahead and these are slow chargers so you, you need to leave your car on them overnight so i will need to try and conserve my battery tonight um, my car is going to be parked on the street outside of my accommodation so i would have liked to have had sentry mode on the whole night but as that does drain the battery a little bit more i will just turn that off and i'll just have to be careful tomorrow to make sure I don't use all my battery. All right, so the car is at 37%. I've parked it out on the street. I've turned off sentry mode to try and conserve battery. So in the morning, I'm gonna see if it's dropped any percentage. Hopefully it's like still 37, 36, because without sentry mode, it shouldn't really drain the battery very much. I think typically, it's like one to 2% per 24 hours without sentry mode on. So we'll see in the morning, I'll give you an update. And I wasn't able to turn on pin to drive. So I wanted to add that extra layer of security because it is parked out on the street without sentry mode, but I wasn't able to turn that on, not sure why. Um, but yeah, let's see what happens tomorrow because I'm gonna need to try and find a charger. I've got two options and um, Dalesford is in the middle of both of those towns they're both about sort of 40 minutes either side so i'm just going to work out which one i'm going to go to
Morning everyone, so it is 9 o'clock here in Dalesford. It's been almost 12 hours since I checked the car last. So I'm going to open the Tesla app and just check what the battery percentage is at. And I'm also planning on going to Kiton later today to use one of the destination chargers in town there. Obviously a destination charger is a lot slower than a supercharger, but I'll just try and uh, spend a couple of hours looking around town and grab some lunch, take it easy. Um, it's all part of the fun really. So yes, let's check the battery percentage of the car. All right, let's wait for this to load. It's just waking up the car at the moment. You can see it takes just a little bit of time. Okay, so there we go, 37% hasn't dropped at all, which is really good. So that's gonna help. Interesting, so 12 hours of the car sitting um, parked, no sentry mode on, uh, has not dropped a single percentage in battery life. I might also just check that the charger in town is still out of order and they haven't miraculously fixed it overnight. So if we zoom in on the ChargeFox app, Tap on this charger. Yep, yeah, so they're still not available. So station faulted, awaiting parts. Man, I'm just gonna try and leave the car parked for as long as possible. So just a slight change of plans. Again, another reality of owning an electric car at the moment in regional Victoria when the charger you're relying on is broken. So, if we are to go to Kitan, we're here. Okay, so we're gonna arrive with 26%, so that's pretty good. My only concern is how long is it going to take to recharge the car on one of the destination chargers. <laughs> So I've just arrived at the Tesla chargers, the destination chargers here in Kiton, and they are attached to a restaurant. So there's a sign at the front that says, you know, it's only customers that can use these chargers and cars will be towed, which is a bit scary. So I'm going to try and just give the restaurant a call now and plead my case and see if I can buy some lunch from them or something just so I can use their charger. Otherwise, um, I've got 25% remaining on the battery, which is not really enough to get me anywhere else comfortably. So yeah, let's call them now and see. The number you have called is not connected. Yeah. Please. The restaurant is permanently closed, apparently. Just nothing, not getting any charge. They've turned them off. Um, so yeah, the chargers are not turning on. It's like they've cut the power to all of them. We've got one, two, three, four Tesla chargers and they're all off. Um, I'm gonna walk around the front of the building and see if I can grab someone's attention. Oh my God, I had a weird, like, I suddenly thought to myself, what if the charges don't work?
All right, so we are back in the car. We are charged up. I'm currently on 85%, which is what I set the car to charge to. So it took about 30 minutes for the car to go from just below 30% to now 85%. Not bad, I went and grabbed some lunch. I quickly ducked into the supermarket and now we're back on the road. Um, but this is where assumptions um, can hurt you because I had heard about some of the other third-party apps that you could download that would show you different charges. Um, I assumed that a lot of them just wouldn't work with Teslas. And so when I found myself in this predicament of not having a charger, Paige was downloading PlugShare and Eevee, and all of a sudden, there's a lot more charges than we realized. So lesson on my part, um, there are charges in most towns by the looks of it. And this one in Kitan, which I had no idea was there, but it must be relatively new, uh, was a fast charger. So super convenient. There's another fast charger in the next town over. Um, but the ChargeFox app, I was assuming was all the other third-party chargers. No, that's just another company. EV is another company, which is what I just used. So annoyingly, I had to download their app, register, add my details um, a little bit hit and miss in terms of connecting up to the car. I didn't quite know what I was doing, but got there in the end. And yeah, overall now, I think it's a good experience because I'll be able to use uh, Tesla chargers, obviously, easiest, best option. But now I know I can use the EV chargers. I can use the ChargeFox network. And from what I can gather, there's even more on the PlugShare app. So it's going to make planning my trip a lot easier. And now let's see how long it's going to take me to get back towards my place in the Mornington Peninsula, so quite a bit further than Melbourne. Let's see how long it's going to take to get home from country Victoria here in Kyneton. Okay, so I'll get back home with 36%. That's great. It's going to take 2 hours and 14 minutes. I'm not going to need to stop for a charge. That's great. <laughs> The really nice thing about driving the Tesla through the Botanic Gardens here is just how quiet the car is. It becomes so noticeable. You can hear everything, all the birds and everything. You're just silently going through these beautiful gardens. So definitely a plus to having an electric car. So lessons have been learnt on this trip. It has been valuable to run into some of these problems because it's taught me things like plug share and i forgot to add it cost me 12 dollars 70 to do 36 minutes of fast charging to go from below 30 percent to 85 percent All right, so I am back home. I've just given the car a quick rinse. But overall, the trip went really well. Obviously, I drove the entire way without stopping from Kiton here to the Mornington Peninsula. So pretty much used autopilot the whole way. Um, that was a key takeaway, is just how beneficial autopilot is on a really long drive like that. So with so much highway driving, had autopilot on 90% of the time. I got home with 44% remaining on the battery, so I'll plug that in tonight and give it a charge back up to 80%.
obviously a big key takeaway for us and for myself on the trip was learning about all these other third-party chargers that we do have access to with the Model 3 and so I've now downloaded a few of those extra apps and that's going to make a difference when we go to plan future trips knowing that we're not limited to Tesla and ChargeFox and hopefully Tesla starts to add all of these third-party chargers onto the map inside the car so you do know that there's those extra options if you're not willing to use a Tesla charger. So I hope you found this video useful, obviously learning along the way with me and uh, yeah, I will catch you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Talk to you soon.